Robin Lundberg Show back with you once again. Brought to you by Caitlin Clark and Polar Seltzer, the two sponsors of this show. You know, it's funny. I've been doing Caitlin Clark material all week. I, I'll, I'm not going to look the uh, gift horse in the mouth, um, if you will, or the, the content machine. I'm not going to scoff at the content machine because all the Caitlin Clark shows have done well. She's still in the news. She's still the thing I want to talk about the most. And I, I wanted to respond to a few comments because there, there's new stuff with Caitlin Clark in the news today, which I'll get to in a second. But there's also comments that I see on my channel. These came in after the show yesterday. Um, I don't even know. I mean, I could share them on the screen, but it doesn't even really matter. Common Sense 3921 wrote in yesterday, how come you people constantly defend Caitlin Clark when anybody say anything about her, but when Angel Reese says she's getting death threats, she gets bashed? And then Crystal Vegan Smith 5728 followed up on that comment and said, oh, don't stop there. How about last year when Caitlin Clark waved off an opponent was seen as passion, but when Angel Reese gives her the same energy, it's seen as thuggery. It's BS. Well, I don't know who you're talking to because I didn't say any of those things. So I can't really respond for other people and what they might have said. All I can do is comment for what I have to say. And I linked to an episode I did that was titled Angel Reese is not a product of Caitlin Clark. And Angel Reese is not a product of Caitlin Clark. Angel Reese is a charismatic young lady. And I am happy to follow her into the WNBA as well. I've never once referred to her as a thug or anything else in that vein. In fact, I would never do that to anyone. Um, I, you know, am going to use this to get into a broader point because a lot of the the criticism of Caitlin Clark, if you will, and I don't even know if I've defended Caitlin Clark. There's nothing to defend her from other than stating the, the facts of the matter and the common sense of the matter. The, the person's name was common sense uh, and not the, the one from Chicago who, who, you know, made like water for chocolate. The, the person who commented on my YouTube page was named common sense and isn't using it because I see so many people trying to dismiss what's going on with Caitlin Clark because she's white. Really? That's either they, they're hinting around it or they're saying it directly that Caitlin Clark is popular and is getting preferential treatment because she's white, which is just not the case. It certainly might help. I'm not saying it hurts. I'm not saying it hurts. It's like the Eminem thing, you know, where maybe being white was a hindrance to him at a certain point to break into the door because white rappers weren't really accepted. But, but once he got in, perhaps it helped his popularity because a bunch of white kids related to him. A bunch of white kids said, I like rap now because they saw Eminem. So there, there's something to that effect. Um, also with Caitlin Clark, she's a white girl playing in Iowa. So I'm sure there's a bit of support rallying around her because of that, that, um, you know, wholesome sort of thing that went on. But that is a very small part of what makes Caitlin Clark who she is and why she's successful. The real reason Caitlin Clark is successful is she can play basketball. And look, basketball is the ultimate truth teller. What do they say? Real recognize real? I've been out on some courts before. How do I? I'm trying to fix my hair, but I can never orient myself in these damn things. Should have put my hat on. Um, you know, I, I've been out on so many damn courts in my life, right, where you earn respect by your ability to play. And I've been called white boy, you know, like Drake. I've been called white boy so many different times in my life. It's all right. Deal with it. Shake it off. Move on. You know, assert yourself. Don't get punked. That's how I always handled it. Because I grew up... Um, in a place called Lusby, Maryland, that was, there wasn't much diversity as far as uh, the makeups of the, the people there, you know, as far as it was like, there wasn't so many in between, right? It was black or white. 
the the population there was like I would say 65% white, 35% black, something like that. Um, but played a lot of basketball, ran track, all those things. Uh, when I got to the city, I lived uptown in a neighborhood and an apartment building where I was the only white dude. Since I got married, um, I've been the only white dude in a lot of rooms in a different sort of scenario from a different sort of ethnic background. But nevertheless, you know, basketball I have found throughout my life to be a thing that really does bring people together. Because if you can hoop, you can hoop. And if you, um, you know, assert yourself, as they say, as the saying goes, real recognize real, right? Ball don't lie. And that's the thing with, with Caitlin Clark. And that's the thing with other figures who have captured the imagination. Because I got breaking news. Michael Jordan is not white. Michael Jordan is not white. And Michael Jordan is a cultural icon and a phenomenon. And he was the one that really elevated the NBA. He's the one that really elevated the NBA. Magic and Bird worked. And Magic was popular. And he ain't white. And LeBron James has been the face of the NBA for going on two decades. The talk of sports discussion for going on two decades. He ain't white. Steph Curry, transform the sport. Might be light-skinned, but he ain't white. You know, so I just, I don't know what about previous history and popularity in basketball that would make all of a sudden people gravitate to Caitlin Clark because she's white. It don't hurt. I'm not saying it hurts. But the real reason she's popular is because of basketball, because she's better than everybody else. And so when Angel Reese gets brought in, Kevin Zwicker says that narrative of Reese has been a thug said by other people. But to your credit, Rob, you have never spoken like that. I've never spoken like that, and I will never speak like that. That's not how I speak. That's not who I am. That's not where I come from. That's not what I'm about. You will never hear me have those words come out of my mouth. Don't get it twisted for one second. But the thing is, Caitlin Clark is way better than Angel Reese. She's way better. Like by a lot. It's not close. And I like Angel Reese. I like Angel Reese. I think Angel, Angel Reese can rebound. Um, you know, she can, she's got nice touch around the basket. Obviously, she's a very charismatic young lady. The Chicago Sky are lucky to have her. The WNBA is lucky to have her. But, you know, I wouldn't even say she's Charles Barkley, right? But Charles Barkley was not Michael Jordan. And Caitlin Clark's just demonstrably better than Angel Reese. That's why she's so much bigger. There are, I'm sure there, there are definitely people who have um, fixed their mouths to say things about Angel Reese that they shouldn't have said. No question. And, and you know, I use the um, I use the comparison of black quarterbacks in the NFL because I've always had to defend black quarterbacks from in the past, which I don't think is a thing anymore, but it used to be a thing where people would say a black quarterback or they would really say a running quarterback would never win a Super Bowl. But really, they were saying it felt coded to me. A black quarterback would never win the Super Bowl. And you would always hear black quarterbacks um, criticized for their decision making or their ability to read a defense and, and things of that nature. And I would always come to the defense of those players. Now, I, I think over time that that has been knocked down. So are there always going to be some layers of, of racial bias or prejudice or things like that influencing speak? Yes. But the big reason is Caitlin Clark is way better than everybody else. She captured people's imagination with her play. That's it. Steve Hewitt says, even in Robin, even in Steve, welcome to the show. Um, happy to see you in here on a day-to-day -day basis now. He adds, I'm stoked. I live an hour from Indy so I can see her bring it to the fever. Wu says, if Caitlin was black, do you think the hype would be the same? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, or very close to the same. Let me put it that way. Would it be, maybe would it be a little bit lessened? Perhaps, because there's always a confluence of factors. It's never like one thing. And in Caitlin Clark's case, it was a confluence of factors. It was, number one, her game. 
other things that played in. She's a white girl. She played at Iowa where it's not traditionally a black, you know, but or not traditionally a big basketball school. I'm sorry. And that, you know, elevated her. Yes. All those things elevated her. But do I think it, it would be like nothing? No, I think there would still be tremendous hype if you had a, a black girl, black young lady come into the league with, you know, off of the college career that she had, off of the college career that she had. So it's just like this, these silly discussions. You know, I, I talked about it yesterday, too. I saw Biden. I don't know if it's Biden or his um, Twitter account basically putting out this thing about, like, equal pay. And again, like like I said on the show yesterday, it's stupid. I mean, the, the NBA subsidized the WNBA for a while. The WNBA didn't bring in the same revenue, didn't have the same amount of games. Of course, the pay is not the same. And and I'm someone who doesn't believe in discrimination at all. I, I, I want equality for all. I want everybody to live their lives. I want everybody to have a fair chance. And I don't want anybody to be discriminated against. But it's silly to act as if, to act as if, you know, these are equal situations or situations that are similar or, or you know, comparable. The, the difference here is, the good thing here is, we're about to see the WNBA elevated because of Caitlin Clark and some of the other, you know, women involved here, including Angel Reese. It's not just Caitlin. It's mostly Caitlin Clark. It's not just. Caitlin Clark. And then they're going back to Steve's comment about, um, I'm stoked. I live an hour from Indy so I can see her bring it to the fever. There's this controversy that's going on. That's the other thing. It's like, it's not even about Caitlin Clark's looks or anything like that either. Right. It's not about that either. But Greg Doyle, the reporter for the Indianapolis star, I believe he is, has already, issued a um apology for this exchange from earlier today let me let me play it for you real quick if you haven't seen it um here is the exchange between greg doyle and caitlin clark right here hi caitlin uh greg doyle indy star real quick let me do this you like you like that I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so. Okay, well, let's cool. start doing it to me and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question. So, I, you know, I'm going to give the guy the benefit of the doubt. I, honestly, I think that was just awkward. You know, you see people calling him a pervert and a creep and all these things. And I get it. Um, like, I get why. And, and it was not a great move. But I, I think, and, and he, he doesn't have necessarily the best reputation from what I understand. But to me, that sounded more awkward. Like, like basically he was saying if, you know, he's making the heart um, sign to her. And it, wow, did the, did the, somebody send me the heart or did the screen pick up me doing the heart to the, the, the camera? I just had the heart score. Uh, I, I think he was basically trying to say, this is my read on it. He was basically trying to say, if you're giving me the heart sign, that means I'm doing a good job. And that means, you know, we have a good relationship. And that means I'm doing my job well because covering you is now the biggest game in town. Essentially, that's how I read that. I didn't read that as a sexual thing or a flirtatious thing or any attempt in that regard. He's apparently writing a column about it um, right now. Here is his apology that he posted already. He wrote, today in my uniquely oafish way while welcoming Caitlin Clark to Indy, I formed my hands into her signature heart. My comment afterwards was clumsy and awkward. I sincerely apologize. Please know my heart literally and figuratively was well-intentioned. I will do better. I believe that. I do. Um, I, you know, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt and that's how it came across to me. It came across as awkward. Like he was trying to say, oh, I hope you like me more or less. And I hope we get along. And, you know, I know I can be maybe a bit of a jerk. Um, so if we're getting along. That's a good thing. And, you know, he's got the best beat in the world right now. You know, I, I would love to be the 
uh, you know, <laughs> just get canned. I'll take that job. <laughs> I, just, I don't wish that on anybody, by the way, of course. Um, but yeah, that that's how I read that situation. So it, it's like I, I said with, with everything else. I don't think, um, I don't think Caitlin Clark's popularity is because she's white. I don't think it's because she's a sex symbol. I, I, I don't think it's because of any of these things. There, there's always multiple factors. And, and again, I don't think her being white hurts, but I think the, the crux of her popularity, the basis of her popularity, the number one reason she's popular is because she can play basketball and she plays basketball than any better than any girl I've ever seen before in my life. Better than any woman I've ever seen before in my life. Her ability to pull off the, you know, off the dribble, shoot from where she shoots from. Not to mention she's an awesome passer. Yeah, you know, throws great outlet passes, sees the floor in a great way, elevates her teammates. Those are the reasons she's popular. She captured the imagination. She's fun to watch. She's fun to watch. And we have on the male side plenty of evidence that black players will be highly accepted by the mass population, whether it be Michael Jordan or LeBron James or Steph Curry. Doug developer says it's fortunate that Caitlin Clark is also very charismatic. Makes me wonder, has there ever been a superstar with no charisma? All I can think of is Kawhi and Tim Duncan, LOL. Yeah, and those guys aren't really superstars either, right? Like they're, so, I mean, they are, but they're, they were never like crossover stars, I guess in the sense where, you thought, oh my goodness, you know, these, I'm never going to get away from these people. They're going to be on every magazine cover, every article, everything like that. Like, you never got that sense from them. Is Jimmy Butler okay? I saw that Jimmy Butler went down and grabbed his knee during the Heat playing game with the Sixers. And of course, that would be terrible. Um, let's see if I can watch the us. So I'm going to throw this up real quick and see if we can watch it together here. Live action. Ubre with the foul. Take... Oh, just landed awkwardly. I'm hoping it was the contact with Ubre rather than a non contact thing. Cause that would be much better if Jimmy was, uh, injured in that way. Because if he's healthy, uh, you know, I don't think you can count the Miami Heat out. If, if he's already injured, they're toast. They're done. It's over. So uh, hopefully Jimmy Butler gets back out there. I'll keep you updated as this show rolls along. Of course, AJ Schreiber says, Chicago uh, Talk Radio was discussing where Sky should play Fever this year. United Center is already booked by Justin Timberlake. They were talking about the game should be played at Soldier Field. Whew, that would be sick. They could. They would sell it out. They would sell it out. I don't think there's any doubt. Soldier Field, that would be sick. Who wouldn't like that? Who wouldn't want to see that? I'm into it. I mean, you're going to see a lot of those games moved or sold out. I think her jersey is impossible to get right now. Caitlin Clark's jersey is impossible to get at the moment. So I, I don't know, you know, I'm not going to talk about probably Caitlin Clark every day for the rest of eternity, but I, I this was the week. Um, the Caitlin Clark shows have done very, very well. And and I did want to respond directly to some of the, the comments that I that I'd seen. So again, her jersey is the number one um top selling jersey ever for a draft pick via fanatics and won't be available again from what I read until August. So there's the the popularity of Caitlin Clark for you right there. Because she can play basketball more than anything else because she can play basketball. Give me a like, comment, all those things um, below. Make sure you subscribe and share. Been on a roll lately on these uh, shows. Some of the, the highest traffic shows since I started consecutively here. So thank you for that. Um, you know, basketball has been what I've been known for. So I've been starting the show with basketball and then getting to my other topics of interest while continuing continuing to cover um, 
those topics in the short form format as well. Um, you can also check out Needle Wrestling for full wrestling shows. You can check me out on Denise Salcedo's um, SmackDown reaction show on Friday nights. I'll be there. You know, I'm trying to get more into the pro wrestling space for sure. Uh, speaking of fanatics, and, and I'll get to some WWE stuff in a minute. Um, I don't know if you saw what Michael Rubin said about the WWE here um, real quick before I transition to the other basketball topic I wanted to get to. But as I'm mentioning it, he said, uh, what's going on with WWE is insane. If I look at the growth in our WWE business, it's absolutely insane. Obviously, the NFL is a multi-billion dollar business for us today. But what's going on with WWE is spectacular. And obviously, you guys know I've gotten more and more into that space as of late. And and I truly love it. Um, So that content is going to continue to come. No question about it. Uh, one more thing on Caitlin Clark from AJ Schreiber in the sports card universe. Her Super Fractor Bowman U card sold for 78000 which is more than her first year salary. Her market is very hot. Yeah, I, I'd love to get my hands on a on that. Whatever those cards. Send me the Caitlin Clark rookie cards. I could use them <laughs> right, right now. I'm going to go get them. I, you know, I've also um, uh, done some sports card stuff. Uh, some, you know, I, I filth bomb breaks out in uh, Long Island. You know, we were there. We did a feature on them for SI and, and sports card breaking. So I, I um, am in tune to that and 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 into that too. Uh, something that's another thing I'm exploring, by the way, uh, as we as this all rolls along. Let's go to uh, Bill L, who says, "You think this is the end of the Golden State Warriors? Probably, though." I wouldn't count out any team that has Steph Curry. I wouldn't count out any team that has Steph Curry um, because that guy's a generational talent. But what I did find strange was the mocking of the Golden State Warriors. What are we mocking? What are we mocking? A dynasty? Are people out of their minds? Again, people are out of their minds. Like, I get it's like the basketball thing to do nowadays. And it's kind of off-putting, to be honest. I'm trying not to do that shit. Like, just clown all the time. Especially greats and legends of the game. What is there to clown about the Warriors? They're out of the playoffs. Okay, so what? They won four titles. They, They set the record for most games ever won by a team. Ever. They didn't win the title that year, which is their biggest failure of the whole thing. But then they went on to win again after Kevin Durant. In fact, you know, I I like playing my shorts on these things because they sum up my feelings. Well, let me share this one with you from earlier today. Here you go. There's nothing to mock about the Warriors. I'm sorry. Because four titles... And a 73-win season will forever be etched in history. Besides, all dynasties run their course. LeBron's my GOAT, but he switched teams each time his respective run was done. And Michael Jordan, the other popular pick, took a break and didn't continue after the last dance was done. And that last trophy and finals MVP Steph Curry won made him untouchable, given he did it again after KD. Or perhaps I'm asleep. So, like, that's really, that's it. I, I'm good at those, I think, because I can say a lot in a little bit of time. And I think very clearly. And that one's doing really well, doing really well on Facebook and Instagram and the like. And um, all my socials have been growing. So make sure you, you you check those out. Follow me over there as well as here. Um, I'm trying to put out as much content as I can on a, a day-to-day basis uh, while living the existence I'm living. But the Warriors... There's just, I I don't get it. You know, and again, as I said in that video there, it's tough when you you run up against it like that. When you run up against it like that, like you get to a certain point and it gets exhausted, right? It gets exhausted. I mean, the, the, the Heat went to those finals and then they broke down in that final year and then LeBron bounced. The Cavs, after they went to those finals, Kyrie was gone. The team was broken up. LeBron goes to the Lakers. You know, even Jordan, as I mentioned in that video there, the Bulls won three in a row. He left before they could collapse. 
And I'm not saying there weren't, I know there are other factors involved, of course, what happened with his father, all those things. But nevertheless, they didn't get to hit that wall. And then they clearly hit a wall the second time around with the last dance. That was the whole premise of that. You know, that the last dance, they knew it was coming to an end and they squeezed all the juice out of it. So to me, the, the thing that put the Warriors over the top is the last championship that they won. Because they, of course, they were going to win when KD was there. Of course. Everybody knew that. That was kind of anticlimactic. But, you know, them winning again after that, I don't think people thought saw that coming. And Steph silenced a lot of the critiques that were around him at that point in time. Because there was nothing you could say. There was nothing you could say. Is Jimmy good, guys? Looks like Jimmy must be good because, see, um, looks like he's scored since he went down. And the six, the Heat are up 33-26 on the Sixers. Hope that score holds because um, <laughs> I, I did the refer friend referrals on the sports betting apps and uh, a new signing bonuses you know, on another account and put all of it on the Heat money line tonight because I like the Heat a lot. So <clears throat> I'm going to spit this polar seltzer all over my computer. Uh, I, I hope the Heat hold that, that lead there. Um, it's only seven points, which is nothing in the NBA nowadays. But let me know if Jimmy's good, guys. I'll search it here while we're talking. I had to, uh, trying to keep, you know, I, I, this time slot seems to work pretty well for people. <clears throat> Though it's up against some things. Um, oh, I see Barstool Big Cat says the playoffs don't start until Jimmy Butler gets hurt and looks like he'll never play basketball again, uh, only to never come out and mostly, most likely dominate. So it looks like Jimmy is indeed okay. Whew. Wouldn't want to see playoff Jimmy out already. And then Wednesday nights is also my basketball night. So I, you know, I wasn't going to run the show any later. I don't, I don't like missing the, the hoops myself. Make sure you guys get the comments in. Please get the likes in, the subscribes in, all those things. Um, all right. Uh, let me transfer over to a couple of the other topics I was going to hit. Kevin Zwicker says the show with Denise was really good. Don't know if you noticed. I sent a super chat. I did see that, Kevin. Thank you. Um, thank you, as always, for following me and, and supporting me. Uh, really, you're, you know, you're as reliable as they come. You've been a good guest on this show. Anybody who wants to be a guest on the show too, let me know if there's ever a topic, even while we're doing it, even while I'm doing it, if there's a topic you really just want to talk about, I can bring you on. If there's a, something you really want to argue with me about, I can bring you on for that. Um, obviously you can continue to comment in the, the comment section that will work too. I'll, I'll read those and put those on air. I, I, do this live so it can be an interactive show, so it can be, you know, a, a show that builds a community and all those things. And, and that's been going really well. Um, so I appreciate that. But yeah, I did see it. And, and again, on Denise's channel, she's obviously huge in that space. I thank her for reaching out to me, thinking of me to do that. I had a lot of fun doing that SmackDown show with her. And it, it seemed to be really well received. I went through the comments on that show later uh, and people seemed to really like it. As far as the, the wrestling topic, for today, I was going to talk about um, Roman Reigns being a movie star. Did you guys see this? Roman Reigns is going to be in this movie with um, Keanu Reeves and Seth Rogen, it looks like. And uh, who else is in there? Here, Here's the, the cast picture. It's uh, Kiki Palmer, Sandra Oh, Keanu Reeves, and Seth Rogen. Pretty pretty big deal, and you, we've seen, of course, um, you know, we've seen. There's Roman right there in the middle. We've seen The Rock and and John Cena make that transition, and I think it's something Roman could do. Because here's the thing about Roman: not only is he charismatic and can he talk, but uh, ladies like him. I've seen it. You know, the other day. Uh, there was a Roman Reigns action figure and, and one of the women in my house that was in my house for a party 
picked it up and said, you know, is this uh, Jason Momoa? And I was like, no, it's Roman Reigns. And then I showed her a picture of Roman Reigns. She was like, oh. And I, there was that TikTok of women. If I could find that, I, I pulled it up. Should have had it ready. There was a TikTok of women finding out who Roman Reigns was. And it went like sort of viral. Um, you know, <laughs> because he is a good looking guy. Let's put it that way. He's a good looking guy. And of course, he's also a charismatic guy. He could cut a promo as a big figure. There's really nothing not to like for his transition to possibly being into Hollywood. I mean, he seemed like the, the natural next phase after The Rock and John Cena. I mean, just he seemed like he was going to be that next. It always felt that way to me. I mean, and look, that there's a there's a correlation between being a huge WWE superstar and being the guy in the WWE and then eventually being a guy in Hollywood. And Tribal Chief, I, I acknowledge what I think he could do as a crossover star. Kevin adds, the Hollywood Roman character will be dope. <laughs> and says, my girlfriend only wants to watch wrestling when Roman is on. So I do it. You know, I'm, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not afraid to admit it. The man is, he's good looking. It's a good looking guy. Roman Reigns, an attractive man. It is what it is. What do you want me to say? <laughs> you know, what would you like me to say? I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the truth. You know what I mean? Handsome guy, that Roman Reigns. The Heat are still leading the Sixers, by the way, 37 to 30. Uh, <laughs> Bill L says, dude is a beast, his afraid his career. Oh, he's not talking about Roman. He's talking about um, Zion. I'll get to that in just a second. Randy Cruz says, my tribal chief. There you go, Randy, our tribal chief. We can admit our tribal chief is a, a lady slayer, of <laughs> an attractive man. It's okay. It's okay to say. And he, I love Roman. You know, he's the one that he's the one that carried this era. He didn't get enough credit sometimes because people got a little tired of it after uh, the the length of time with um you know the length of time he was gone for. But his uh his uh his abilities are, are second to none. I didn't find the the women one. Let's just watch this one together. I don't even know what this TikTok is. Let's just see what this is. We're gonna smash tomorrow night, and then we're gonna move on. Oh, no, I'm not watching that one. <laughs> it fits into the vibe of what I was saying, but I'm not going to watch that one. Uh, Bill L., here's what he was talking about. You think Zion is going to be one of those, what if he was able to stay healthy athletes? I do. Unfortunately, probably, though I'll give Zion credit, he looks a lot physically better. He looks physically better. He looks like he's moving better. He looks like he's taking better care of himself. And he got hurt, you know, some of the other injuries in the past, it's like, is this dude too big? Is this dude taking it seriously? Is this dude need his gait adjusted the way he ran? Those were the things I was concerned about. Last night was just bad luck. It just sucked because he was moss. He was a beast. He was putting it to the Lakers. And he just tweaked his hamstring. It happens. So I'm hoping um, that's not the case for him. Obviously, it's concerning. At this point in his career, clearly, I mean, you, you can't say otherwise. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case. Bill adds, due to his beast, afraid his career will be cut short. I think we're all afraid of that with Zion, and it was a bummer to see him out of that game last night um, after the way he played. But I, I, I will say this for Zion: I think he is taking it more seriously now. I think he is committed to what he's doing now. And that's the first step in staying healthy. You never know. You know, there's been plenty of people who had injury histories and and um, could never stay healthy. And, and it's out of their control. It's not always you're under your control. But I think Zion has at least taken the necessary steps to keep himself healthy and out on the floor. And that's important. That's important. But yeah, it was a shame. And the Pelicans are toast now. You know, because of that. Unfortunately. 
No one wants to see that. Last thing I had on the rundown was this um, Kendrick Lamar AI thing. It was funny how much the Drake supporters wanted that to be real. They were like campaigning like it was real and all these things. And I'm like, nah, bro. I never thought that was real. And then the, the creator of it came out. And even after the creator came out and said how he um, how he made it, you know, DJ Academic says alleged, you know, he made the alleged AI song, even though this guy has made an AI Kanye song before. And the Kendrick thing always sounded like AI to me. But here's the here's the TikTok. Um, explaining it. Yo, 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 Sire the Rapper here, and this is how I created the viral AI Kendrick Lamar diss track. Out of my name, three times in front of your mirror. You hesitate to proceed after you reconsider. Lights flickered, the energy in the room shifted. You scared to open your eyes, and you feeling the ghost of Kendrick. Now, first, you gotta get a beat that sound like chaos and the world is ending. So, this is a beat that I cooked up. <laughs> And you gotta write some lyrics and spit them the way that K Dot would write them and spit them. Utter my name three times in front of your mirror. You have to take them proceed after you reconsider. I know Kendrick Lamar likes to emphasize his T's. Party. He can T, T, party. So we gotta incorporate that. Grab your glocks when you see K Dot. See that hard T I was telling y'all about? Dot. Most people just say dot. He dot. As but not least, I gotta put my B tag on it. <laughs> You get the point. But here's the thing. I never thought that was Kendrick. I never for a second. Because you know what was missing is the energy and the inflections. It's like you listen to like that and ah, oh, you know, like in all that stuff he's hitting you with on that, like in the ups and downs and the way he changes his inflections and voice tones and all that. Like you think he was going to respond to Drake with this flat energy the whole time? It was a dead giveaway. It was a dead giveaway. I knew that was AI from the second I heard it. And here's the thing. Kendrick has been waiting for this moment. You think we're not going to all know when he drops the diss track? We'll know. It won't be mistaken as much as the OVO crowd wants it to be. It won't be. It won't be. It'll be something. It'll be interesting, but it won't be AI. And as Kevin says, nah, he was paid off to say it was AI. You Drake guys are you know, doing backflips and bending yourself into uh, pretzels and the like. I saw that Taylor Swift person call out Drake today. There was a lot of um, profanity in that video. But the one point he was kind of spitting that was ill was, uh, you know, Drake mouthed the words to that song. You know, Drake mouthed the words to uh, that same Taylor Swift song that that Kendrick was on. And Drake himself said he sees Taylor as the competitor. You know, so I, I don't know. It's like, it's basically just saying that Kendrick is versatile and popular. The fact that he can, um, you know, be on... Taylor Swift and Maroon 5 songs. Bill L says, question, you're a New Yorker, but it seems like you're not crazy about New York teams like your New York media peers. Why is that? Just wondering. Well, I'm not a native New Yorker, number one. Uh, you know, number two, I'm not doing New York sports talk. If you, if I was doing a New York sports talk radio show, I'd be absolutely dialed into the New York teams. And I, I bring the, the passion you know, I always bring that passion and I always want to approach things from a fan's POV. But I've also never been a super fan like that. Like, it's just not how I'm wired, you know. And I'm also not a ranter and a raver. Um, so that's just not how I'm wired. But don't mistake that for not having the passion. Obviously, I'm a Nets fan, as you can see. Um, and, you know, I was around for those giant Super Bowls and... You know, uh, uh, it's cool to see the Knicks in the playoffs. Uh, they're, you know, the the Jets are always good for content. I was at the Yankees World Series parade in 2009 when Hove was on the stage. So, uh, yeah, it's just I didn't grow up in New York, and I didn't grow up as a super fan of any team. And I um, also am just not like, 
you know, rants are not my thing. It's just not my thing, generally. Ernesto says, you got done by a Terminator T-1000. I'm, I'm assuming that was referencing the AI thing. That's wild. It's wild that the, the AI thing is where it is right now. It's partially scary. Um, but I still can tell the difference, which is a good thing. When I can't tell the difference, I'll need to be a little bit more concerned. But I can tell the difference. By the way, Miami Heat 51, Philadelphia 76ers 37. So that's looking good at the moment right now. It's looking good for my bets right now. Ernesto says I'm a closet Knicks fan. Dude, I was a huge Knicks supporter. I was rationalizing the Isaiah Thomas moves back in the day and cheering Eddie Curry for scoring 19 points, however many consecutive games he did it and, and all those things. You know, so I, I don't hate on, you know, I, I, I cheered. Lynn Sanity is still the coolest thing I ever covered. And I, I was a Chris Stapps Porzingis supporter, all those things. But once I went all in on the Nets, I can't then go back to the Knicks. That's not fair. Uh, Kevin says, what did you think of the Nets coaching hire? I addressed this on yesterday's show, but I don't have too many thoughts because I don't know enough. Like, I'm not going to pretend I know. He's very well respected. And I, in general, um, my philosophy is to find the next guy, not the the last guy. But the Nets have hired a lot of first-time coaches, so I would have been hired, um, perfectly fine with, with Budenholzer. Perfectly fine. But at the, the same time, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at all about the hire. And it, it you know, he, he seems to be well-respected. So good. Let's see what he can do. Let's rock and roll. Because, the you know, we'll see what happens with the Phoenix Suns. Those people are sleeping a little bit on how big an asset those Suns picks that the Nets have are. Those are big assets. Because the Suns could fall right off a cliff. Right off a cliff. And if they do, those Nets picks are gold. And let's say the Nets were to flip those picks into a player like Donovan Mitchell this summer. And then their books were completely clear and they were to sign a star next summer. That's potentially possible with the contract that Bridges is on. Or they just ride it out until they get there and build organically and build the quote unquote right way. But that's the, the saving grace for the Nets right now are those picks. Kevin says, uh, Nick's Twitter guy said I was supporting an opt when I told him I was a fan of yours, LOL. Let's get the Nick's Twitter guys on. Hit them up. You know, bring them on before the Knicks playoff game. Maybe on Friday I could do a, a special on – the Knicks play on Saturday, right? Or do they play on Friday? I think they play on this weekend, I think. Is their first game. So maybe Saturday I can get some of the Knicks Twitter people on. Hit them up. Circle the wagons. I'll be glad to have them on the show. Uh, my, my guy, uh, Randy, is a, a Knicks Twitter guy. He can come on the show. The one that, that shouted out his tribal chief, Roman Reigns, earlier. I was on uh, his show last night. Always been, we've always been tight. And uh, I still, Randy, by the way, I wear the hoops on the sun stuff to play ball all the time. All the time. And one of those, I think it was one of those hoops on the sun, hoops in the sun games at Orchard Park Beach in the Bronx when Lisa Ann was my coach and uh, I was guarding Ray Rice the entire game. And every time I caught the ball, the DJ played the theme song from Friends. <laughs> that was a good day. That was a fun day. Shouts to Anthony Donahue and Kaz. He was in the, the car with us. Um, I saw him at WrestleMania. I'll have him on the show at some point, too. But, yeah, the Knicks, Knicks people or the Knicks fan police, if, if we're doing a callback to my old show, they are more than welcome on the show. Papa Left, I tried to have on the show one time, Kevin, um, and he had he was sick or something that day. But I will, uh, I will have him – I will have whoever on if they would like to come on and – I'm not, you know, against the the. I was against the way the Knicks were run. I'm not against the current Knicks regime because there's nothing to be against. It's silly. That's just hating. You know, people say you're hating. No, I wasn't hating. Well, to go back to, I think I read a um, a comment from someone named 
common sense about the Caitlin Clark thing at the top of the show, right? Like that was essentially saying that Caitlin Clark's popular because she's white. And I, I referenced Common Sense, the rapper at that point, but Common had a line, if I don't like it, I don't like it. It don't mean that I'm hating. And I, I think that's very true, right? Um, if I were to be dissing the Knicks now, I would be hating. There's the difference. Therein lies the difference. All right, that's what I got for tonight's show, guys. Um, any other comments, get them in, please. And thank you. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button. Share and comment. Uh, make sure you check out that Needle Wrestling channel. Um, my show with Denise on Fridays. Smackdown reaction show, 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, all my other social channels, TikTok, Instagram, or the YouTube shorts right here. I post, it's the, those are the, the same videos that I'm posting over there, of course. Um, but, you know, all those topics that you're into and that you guys are fans of too, I'm making content about and around. Uh, I don't know if Wu asked why I was already, he asked earlier in the show, you all right, man. Uh, and I'm tired. I was running around. My son had another hospital appointment today and then I was getting my daughter from practice. And and obviously I've got a lot going on in my life right now. Like I said earlier, it's the worst year of my life. No question about it. I'm stressed and, and trying to make things happen. But otherwise I'm fine. I, I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't having a mental breakdown today, if that's why you're asking. Uh, Bill L says, is the SI situation concluded? For me, yeah. Uh, you go back and watch the um, episode I did called The Job Does Not Define Me. I'm not, I'm not rehashing that again right now. It's, it's not, um, I don't, I, I still got like a little bit, of, like a very small amount of time officially there, but no, it, I am done there uh, and not in limbo there anymore. So I do need to find the next thing professionally as well. So I think I saw a bill that might've been you who replied to uh, uh, something Rosenberg put out and, and the uh, mass man who I met at WrestleMania too. I, I'm not above saying hit up everybody. You guys know um, that you like, that you'd like to see me on, you know, the, that support helps, you know, when people know that people have a following behind them, when people are seeing somebody's name out there, um, when they're hearing their name out there, but most importantly, just keep showing up here. Keep talking to me here. Keep chatting with me here. Keep sharing here. Keep hitting like. Keep telling your friends. Keep um, becoming friends with me through this. Tell me if you want to come on the show. You can check it out on Apple, on Spotify, on iHeart, on Amazon as well. It's available on all those platforms. So, um, yeah, I'm plugging away because this is what I do. I think this is what I do well. Uh, do best. It's what I know how to do. And, and I think I'm pretty damn good at it. As I've said, even when I'm running on fumes, even when I'm running on fumes. And when I got Caitlin Clark to, for the boost, you know, I, I joked with Randy on his show last night, just like title your show, Caitlin Clark watches NBA playoffs and watch the numbers go up because she's got the juice right now. There is no question about it. She's a special talent, a special needle mover, a special um, generational figure. She is the Michael Jordan. As I said on the show that I did there, and, and I didn't hate Angel Reese. I like Angel Reese. Angel Reese is a charismatic lady. She is a talented basketball player. She's just nowhere as good as Caitlin Clark, and that's okay. It's like not a diss. She's not even close to as good. She's very good. She's not as close to as good or even close to as good, but she's super charismatic. She could carry commercials. She could carry other stuff like that. And she's a good basketball player. But Caitlin Clark's more popular, the number one reason at least, is because she can hoop. Simple as that. Basketball. Caitlin Clark is popular because of basketball. Bill L says, of course, all love. Kevin says, when Kendrick drops, I definitely want to come on. Any other comments? Get them in. Um, I'm going to wrap this one up. Here in a second, I'll be back tomorrow. Maybe I'll get another Friday. Maybe I'll get a Friday show in. I've been doing the Friday ones in the afternoon um, for obvious reasons. And then I, I've got the Friday SmackDown show with Denise as well. But um, yeah, I'm trying to give, you know, be as consistent as I can on here. And it's paying off. You know, the, the, the show is growing. The channel 
is growing. I mean, those are indisputable facts. You know, of course, I would like to see things just go like crazy wildfire and money start pouring from the ceiling. But there is no question that the the show is growing and doing better and improving. and, And there are more viewers and more followers and all that. Let me, I'll just share with you some numbers. YouTube's analytics are very good. So, um, the last 28 days, there were almost 200,000 more views of my channel than normal. The last 28 days, the watch time was up about 2000 hours more than usual. The last 28 days for this show specifically, just for the, that's for the channel as a whole, just for this show. The viewership was up 50% in the last 28 days. So the viewership has more than doubled in the last 28 days. The watch time has increased by 43% in the last 28 days. So you you see numbers like that. I mean, I'm sharing with you because you guys are the, you know, dedicated audience. I, I want it to keep growing. There's no question. You always want it to keep growing, but it is growing. And I think that's the, you know, best indicator I can have right now is seeing it's growing. And, you know, it would be one thing if it plateaued or was falling flat or anything like that, but it's growing and, and you guys are a big part of it. So uh, if I could like you somehow, I would please like, please subscribe, please share, please comment. If you comment, Later, I will get back to you later, as you guys can see. In fact, I even used comments to drive the narrative and the direction of tonight's show. And that's a wrap for tonight's show. I'll be back tomorrow. Same Robin channel. Thanks, guys.